Alright, welcome back, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another uh, another video here with this classic ThinkPad A31P professional workstation laptop from IBM, circa 2002 to 2004. Uh, very interesting machine. Again, uh, as someone who currently uses a, a workstation class laptop, as I have a ThinkPad P71 uh, that I use for gaming and, and, and editing video editing and some other, some other, you know, around the workshop here as well as personal stuff. Uh, I'm used to having a big, heavy, unwieldy <laughs> system that, that isn't lightweight and easy to carry around. Um, you know, uh, in my, in my IRL job, um, I have a, a, uh, ThinkPad as well. And it's, um, a lightweight, uh, yoga, I think it's a ThinkPad yoga, uh, and it's lightweight and it's uh, fine, um, but I, it's not, you know, whether from like the corporate image or just the age of the system and how low performing it is to fit in such a small form factor, the performance isn't great. Um, whereas I found always having a, a full size laptop, I uh, was kind of no compromises in performance. Uh, and you know, I would think that that you would think that that should be the case, right? That you're you're going to get better thermals because you've got more room to put, you know, bigger pipes, bigger fans, etc., and and keep air out, uh, keep hot air out, and and keep cold air circulating in, and have more room for upgrading as well, so you don't have to worry about having things like soldered memory and any of that type of stuff. Um, so that you know was certainly the case with something like this A31P, right? Big box. Um, of course, back in the time of you know when IBM was still making ThinkPads. Um, you know, most laptops didn't have soldered chips, uh, stuff was still socketed. So, you know, that's the case here. I'm pretty sure that, um, this has got, I think a two gigahertz, uh, Pentium four, and you could get up to a 2.4 gigahertz, I think. And this was a Pentium four M Pentium four mobile processing. The GPU may be soldered. Uh, the, the ATI video card that's on here, maybe, maybe a chip on board, uh, but the memory's, uh, uh, upgradable, the hard drive is upgradable, and it even has those two ultra bay 2000s to be able to swap out and swap in optical drives and a whole bunch of other different components, um, that you could, uh, swap back and forth to have a lot of flexibility. So pretty interesting box. Um, you know, at the time considered to be the most, I think one of the most powerful, portable computers that you could get right in the in that in that time range um so i wanted to see um how well it could handle running something other than the operating system that was around at the time which this system was designed for windows 2000 and windows xp um, and i thought maybe we'd try out uh, windows 7 and see how that goes so i do have a copy an nfr copy of uh, windows 7 pro 32-bit um, so an actual real CD, uh, not something burned, uh, off, uh, off the interwebs. Um, and I've got a key for it as well. Well, I don't know if we're, we won't bother activating it cause I'm only going to have this on here for a day, um, or so. And, uh, so we're going to try, try this out. So windows seven, you know, recently went end of service from Microsoft. So they're not sending security updates for it anymore. So it's kind of in the same boat as windows XP in terms of, you know, whether, whether or not you consider it to still be a usable operating system today, uh, it's not a safe operating system to use when you connect to the internet. So obviously on an offline computer, it doesn't matter what operating system you put in an offline computer, because as long as no one's physically going to get their hands on it, you're never going to have to worry about anyone being able to, uh, to do any evil things. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get the system booted up and get this CD in here. And we are going to prepare the boot list. We're going to install, see if we can get, get Windows 7 installed here. So hopefully it'll boot up okay uh, into, uh, into the boot uh, setup here. Okay, so for some reason, the, uh, the drive would not boot. <laughs> uh, the installation. So what we're going to do instead is I started Windows uh, and we're going to start it from within Windows XP uh, to launch the actual installer applications. You can see here this is now running from the, the drive here. Check compatibility or install. So we're going to click install now. 
and get this up and running and see how that goes. I'm not sure if this is just a problem with the drives. I know, um, so this, this uh, the DVD multi burner, this doesn't seem to work at all uh, in the system. I've tried to boot from it and within Windows and it, it doesn't seem to wanna go. So I'm not sure if it's defective. Maybe it's not supported. This particular one wasn't supported on the A31P. The person who had it before obviously bought it and it was in the system when it was given to me. So, you know, I'm not sure what, what the deal is with that. Um, but the CD rewriter DVD combo seems to work fine, but it would not boot that um, this install DVD. I tried a couple DVD-Rs that I burned with other OSs. Um, I tried the, um, the recovery. The recovery CDs work fine. So I'm not sure what it is uh, on here. So we're going to go as uh, we are not going to ask for the latest updates. We're just going to get this installed and up and running and see what's going. So I'm going to um, I'm going to say I want to install a new fresh install of Windows because this isn't the biggest hard drive um, on the earth. It's only, I think, a 30 gig hard drive, maybe a 40 gig hard drive. And I'm not sure if installing this Windows 7 install right over top of the Windows XP install. Um, I know there's like the windows.old file usually gets kept when you do an upgrade. If we're going to possibly run into issues, because I have a whole bunch of stuff installed on this uh, as well, uh, which, which is, I prefer to do a fresh install anyway, just for uh, the purposes of making sure that this actually runs uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm expecting that it's going to work. I mean, it's, it's a, a 2.4, 2 gigahertz processor. It, yeah, it's single core, single threaded. There's one gig of RAM installed on here. So for a 32 bit install of Windows, we should be running okay. Okay, we are uh, in the Windows uh, start area here. Now, obviously, a fresh install of Windows. I haven't connected to the internet. Uh, so drivers are not, you know, able to be downloaded or installed outside of what's on the base package here, uh, which means that it's a very high likelihood that the uh, graphics driver, uh, etc. are not um, are not going to be showing up here. Uh, that is something that we will have to take care of um, on the system as well. So we'll just pop open device manager here and take a look. I'm going to assume there's going to be a lot of yellows in here. Yeah, so um, standard graphics adapter instead of the, the ETI GPU that's actually on here. Um, that's why we're getting the small uh, panel and we're not going to get that updated on its own. In fact, if there aren't any drivers that exist for Windows 7 for this graphics adapter, then it won't be able to use it at all. Uh, what I might do is, uh, well, what I will do is we'll, we'll work on getting some drivers downloaded and show off this system um, at its full capacity. But just taking a look briefly here at, at standard, um, you know, processor-wise, we're not hitting, obviously we're not hitting hard, but there's nothing else literally installed on the system except for base Windows install. Um, no services that would be connected to the internet uh, to be able to do any telemetry, like an antivirus program or firewall or anything like that are, are operating, um, other than, you know, maybe there's a couple jumps here. So maybe there's some stuff that's kind of looking for, looking for work. Um, and then our memory is, is, you know, 
pretty high given the amount that's available, right? So there's one gig of memory available on this system and we're using a third of it just to run Windows. So um, once we start getting some other stuff on here, we're definitely going to have some, some issues. Uh, show processes from all users on here and we'll just take a look and see um, if there's any other stuff that's running on here. So there may just be some, again, Windows is finishing its install. There may be some other stuff that it's kind of loading up, maybe looking for drivers that are part of the Windows package in the background, uh, that type of thing. Yeah, so it works. Um, what we'll do is uh, I'll spend a little bit of time getting uh, drivers and stuff updated and customizing this, uh, and then we'll take a look and see how it, uh, how it performs, so to speak, uh, with all of that taken care of. All right, so we've run some updates now on, uh, on Windows 7 here. I ran the Windows update. There's a couple parts that didn't want to update, and I, I haven't gone through in a lot of detail to, to get things as crisp and clean as possible, but I tried to minimize on the performance requirements. You can see in terms of the, the sizing um, themes and whatnot are, are as basic as possible. I uh, downloaded a couple of drivers from the OEL, uh, end of life uh, driver files from Lenovo uh, that are still on to support some older, you know, IBM products as well. And just to try and not have default things like put the ATI graphics on here instead of the defaults. I didn't bother downloading the Bluetooth or Wi-Fi drivers because we're not using those here. Um, so from a performance perspective, it's, I mean, idle is fine, <laughs> but um, basically as soon as you try to do anything um, reasonable on this thing, you you pin the CPU. Um, and I'll show the example here when we go. Um, and you can see, you know, right now we're not really doing much. I'm going to launch Chrome. Just Chrome. Uh, and we'll see here how, how I don't want to say poorly, but how poorly uh, this processor actually handles uh, this this task. Now, obviously, you know, you could say Chrome is is not a, um, you know, not a big deal, or it is a big deal. You're running a couple of instances of it, uh, but even just going to the Google homepage here, you can see the amount of memory that's being used to run this has not gone up a heck of a lot. We're, we're just under 50% utilization now, but we're less than 200 megabytes worth of memory being used to, to get this up and running. Um, let me go to the ThinkPad Reddit page. And this is even with some caching and history on here because I've gone to the page two or three times. Uh, the performance is terrible. Their performance is absolutely terrible. Um, I won't even bother going and showing you how bad YouTube was because uh, it literally took five minutes just to even get something up. So from the perspective of, you know, how well does, does Windows 7 run on this system? I mean, it runs, but it, in XP, I was able to go to those to a site like this. I was able to go to the YouTube site, and while it was slow... Uh, the load times and everything weren't weren't ridiculous like this. So obviously something between Windows XP and Windows 7 from how things are handled or, you know, possibly for, for what Windows thinks it can handle from graphics, downloading what kind of graphics it's going to download and what images it's going to make available that maybe XP doesn't, you know, the, the versions of Firefox that I had with, with uh, running on Windows XP wasn't downloading, you know, all the up-to-date pieces uh, of a page because it just it knew it wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, so this is definitely, you know, not, I wouldn't call this as being usable <laughs> in the slightest um, uh, at all. But what, what I am interested in is the fact that the amount of memory utilization that's happening on this one is not terrible. I mean, 
we're, granted that this is one only one tab open in a, in a Google Chrome browser, but the fact that we're 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 not running at like ninety percent memory or hundred percent memory utilization right now, uh, I think is a good thing. Uh, you know, bodes well for for the capabilities of a low memory install, um, but the processor definitely is not is not up to task uh, being able to handle this now. That being said, I am going to try Windows 10 on this system because I know if I can do Windows 7 that the chances that Windows 10 is going to be able to do the same thing I think are pretty good. That we could get a Windows 10 install in here and have it provide the same level of performance. Being obviously crappy performance, yes, but... <laughs> Not any worse. I don't think it will be any worse. Again, with minimal performance requirements, dumbing everything down as much as possible. So we're gonna try a Windows 10 install as well, but my, my test here to see if Windows 7 can handle this, not great, not great. And I don't expect 10 is gonna be great either. I think that what'll end up being the best OS to run on this system, because I wasn't thoroughly impressed with how well XP ran either, um, would be either to go back, would be either to downgrade to Windows 2000, to run on this system, which I think would run very well, or to put a Linux install on here. Um, and again, I'm not I am not incredibly familiar with Linux. Uh, I've never used it on a day to day basis outside of you know a few uh, Linux installations on some like uh, stand you know single task devices like doing a Linux install on a on a router or a, or a, an old NAS box or something. Uh, but as a desktop environment, don't have a lot of con uh, familiar familiarity with it. But I do know that they are, you know, Linux. Obviously, you can you can have a very similar desktop experience with much lower uh, system performance requirements. So we may try a uh, a uh, Linux install on this afterwards, um, just to see how well that how well that runs. But at the very least, we're going to try Windows 10 next, and uh, and then Windows 2000. Uh, after that. Anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this experience with me. Uh, unsuccessful, I think, uh, in terms of capability, but uh, an experience nonetheless. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, uh, please uh, feel free to leave them in, in the comment section down below. I will, uh, I will be uh, sure to respond to them. Uh, and in the meantime, I hope you're staying safe and healthy, and we'll catch you in the next one.